Well, it's actually early the next morning and I finished putting the cases back together. That is the transmission shift drum and crankshaft and bolted it up yesterday afternoon, late in the day, and torqued it with my little torque wrench and I was done for the day. I'd had enough. So this is uh, pretty much as I had left it yesterday with the exception that I did install the uh, shift shaft which just pushes through right here. Uh, it went together easily. I didn't really have any trouble with it. It went together actually easier than most two strokes where the uh, main bearings are tend to be a, a friction or interference fit and this Honda they're not. You'll notice I have these uh, rubber bands holding the connecting rod and the reason I do that, you've probably if you've watched me before my videos before you've seen me use this technique so that allows me to turn the crankshaft you can see there without that connecting rod flopping back and forth that's the only reason I do that the um, gasket right here I think you can see where my thumb is right here and right here is going to have to be trimmed off I also removed the neutral switch you can see right here uh, just to check it and I did find that I don't know if you can see that right there there's a crack in it, there's a crack right there. In fact, this had opened up. There was a gap in there and I pushed it back together. So I, you can still get this part from Honda. So I ordered a new neutral switch. There's a little O-ring right there that seals it so that the oil and the lower end doesn't leak out. That neutral switch fits right there. And you can see that brass neutral plate, I think, in there from the transmission shift drum. And that goes through from the outside, so that's, that's not an issue to add that later. Reposition the engine a little bit here so you can get a better look. Uh, crankshaft, driven shaft, <clears throat> uh, and then of course the, the NOS kickstart shaft. And I did put, uh, just a few minutes ago, I put the kickstarter on this and turned it to make sure that it worked, and it does. And then of course this is the the shift shaft here that will eventually drive the, or turn, or rather the shift drum. Uh, and the oil pump will mount in here. So my next uh, steps will be to start reassembling this right side of the engine. Shifter mechanism here, uh, oil pump, and eventually the clutch basket will fit over here the drive pinion that will all go on here. There's a fair amount of uh, assembly that goes into this side of the engine. When I get to the clutch basket I might end up um, sourcing new clutch plates. I don't know. I haven't really even got to that yet. I'll do with a clutch basket uh, at the point I'm ready to start installing. Well it's uh, the next day and I have completed uh, assembly of much of the bottom end of the right side of the engine. The shift shaft right here I'm pointing to on my right index finger and the shift mechanism is all in place. I did turn the motor up into its normal orientation, put the shift lever on the end of the shift shaft, opposite end of this shaft, and it did shift it through all the gears and back again several times to make sure everything works, and it does. One caution, if you do shift this unit with the side cover as it's sitting right now off, the right side cover, this shaft can actually move this way and those little ears underneath there for the return spring can pop off the boss that's cast into the side of the case. Now on the side cover is normally on, there is a boss that's uh, cast into the side cover that pushes pushes against that and or prevents that from happening. So just be careful. Don't ask me how I know. The oil pump assembly is pretty much in place, uh, as you can see in here. This drive pinion I just slipped on, that uh, comes right off. That's a brand new drive pinion right there. That's brand new because uh, the original was quite rusty and I wasn't um, confident in uh, its integrity anymore because it was the original and was quite rusty. Let's see if I can get this. There we go, back in place. So I've got the oil pump assembly as assembled as I can before I move on to the clutch basket because the rest of the clutch, or rather the oil pump 
um, mechanism includes this, this part, a gasket this fits on like that. And of course you've got a hold down nut over here and a washer that fits down in here and holds this whole assembly onto the end of the crankshaft. But the clutch basket actually fits underneath this, uh, actually this spins, it's called a rotor. This spins in through a centrifugal force uh, as part of the pumping mechanism uh, for the oil uh, pump. Anyway, that can't go on until the clutch basket is on. So I'm just going to set these components aside right now. They're all ready to go. This is all pre-assembled as you can see. A new gasket that will fit on top of it uh, when the time comes. And the nut over here on the upper right and the washer are NOS new. You might be able to still get those from Honda. I'm not sure right off the top anymore, but uh, they're, they're easily obtainable. They're not hard to get. If you watched my earlier video, you will recall I had to, or I did buy a special tool to remove this original nut, which I will use that same tool to put this nut back on when the time comes. So what we're going to do now is move on to the oil, I'm sorry, to the clutch basket, clutch assembly, which will fit, of course, over right here like this, over the end of the crankshaft. I um, haven't really done anything with that, so... Well, I changed my setup here a bit, and we'll take a look at the uh, used uh, clutch basket that I purchased for this bike. Well, here's the replacement clutch pack that I bought for the Honda used. It came just as you see it here. I have not taken it apart yet, but we will in a minute. But we're way of comparison, here's the original clutch pack. And... The reason I replaced this is because of the deterioration of the gear, the drive gear right here. And you can see the backer plate, They're very, very rusty. Compare that to this one. And I simply don't, don't trust this. It has so much corrosion. And I don't know if this uh, backer plate, the steel plate here has been compromised. Certainly the gear itself, you can see here is very corroded. Uh, the, the plates, the clutch plates, and some of the other components might be usable, but I did not trust this, given this severe level of corrosion. So we replaced it with this one. Uh, this clutch has five fiber plates, one, two, three, four, five, four steel plates. It's a very common design. And we'll go ahead and take this apart a little bit here and take a look and see what we got. Four springs, of course. Honda does. Honda does. Um, get those washers out of there. Call out a specification on the clutch plate thickness. That is how thick the individual plates are. That's a lifter right there. They call that the lifter. Have to do a little inspection of the bearing. The um, four springs, Honda does not call a specification on the length of the springs on this bike, believe it or not. In fact, there's a nut right there. It's like a head nut. There we go. Like a head nut. Uh, as I was saying, Honda doesn't call out specification on the length of the springs for this particular bike, though they do for some of their other 125s. But they do for the clutch plates themselves. So let's uh, let's go ahead. I'm just kind of studying the clutch a little bit. Looks like a very typical design. Checking for wear. This is all aluminum. 
doesn't look uh, too badly worn. And then here's, of course, the first of the fiber or cork clutch plates. So when I take a clutch apart, what I typically do is I literally will do this with it in reverse order. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. There's one of the steels, what they call steels. You know, a little corrosion, but doesn't look badly worn. So I'll flip that upside down like that on the first one. And I literally will fold them over as I take them apart. Doesn't look damaged. Just doing a quick once over of each plate to see what it looks like. So far, so good. Probably has been sitting for a while. That's what some of that surface corrosion is about. a closer close-up view of that plate so outside of being a little bit corroded the steels I really don't see anything that pops out at me and then this is the Back plate. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And that um, looks like it's in very good shape too. I'm looking for wear here where the fingers of the plates can wear and chatter in here and create wear marks. I don't really see that on this. The ring gear, the gear, the drive gear looks good. Notice there's a washer in here. I'm holding my thumb on that so I don't lose that. So all in all I would say the clutch pack looks really good. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'll clean everything up. I'll clean the plates, clean all the various components. Then I will measure the plate thickness and see if they're still within the service limits. I think it's a minimum of 2.6 millimeters thick. It'd be here. I believe that's what it is. 2.9 I think is factory new. 2.6 is the minimum. You could take a dial calipers or a micrometer and measure in a couple of spots around each one and essentially get an average. Uh, and as long as they're not below 2.6 millimeters in thickness and there's no damage, visible damage like cracks, missing material, you can put them back in the service. So I'm going to clean all this up, spend a little time on that. I'll check out the thickness of the plates. Before I do the thorough deep cleaning of everything, I thought I would do a little checking of some of the clutch plates. So I just took the top one right here and I wiped it off. And I measured it. <clears throat> Before I show you that process, in the climber Honda manual right here, under clutch specifications, it lists the friction disc. That's what these cork plates are called. The free friction disc thickness is 2.9 to 3 millimeter. I think I said it was 2.9. I think the Honda service manual indicates 2.9, but the climbers is 2.9 to 3 millimeter. So I took a few of these, wiped them off, kept them in order, and you can see, let me zero out my caliper right there and I'll show you I'm just going to measure 
That's very consistent with uh, all of these plates. In fact, I did every one of them, I think. I did, or at least three or four of them. And the all measure 2.9 to 2.99, right in there. So they're all well within the wear limit, which is the minimum is 2.6. And I didn't see any damage on any of these plates, so I'm going to reuse the uh, clutch plates after they're cleaned, of course. The same chart calls out a, a spring free length. You can see that right there. However, for the SL125, which would be under all other 100 and 125 cc's, this is NA, information not available. I'm just going to go with that 35.5, which is standard, and the minimum would be 32. So I did take all four of these, and they're, they're clean and dry. Let me zero this out again. So it should be around um, 35.5 millimeter. We're about 35 35.5. 35.47. 35.57. Thirty-five point three two, and that's right at specifications. And again, keep in mind once again, the minimum is thirty-two. We're running right around thirty-five. And as these springs are all nice and clean, there's no rust or corrosion on any of them. I think they're completely serviceable too. And in fact, I'm I'm guessing this clutch does not have a lot of miles on it or a lot of wear. I think it's been probably sitting uh, far more than it was ever used in its early uh, part of its life. So now we're going to go clean them all up, get everything cleaned up, and uh, we'll pick this up on the other side. I've got all the clutch components laid out here and all cleaned and prepared, as you can see. The clutch steels, these are the originals, if you recall, they had a little bit of a minor surface corrosion on them. I got them all cleaned up. The way I did that is I took them over to my media uh, blast booth and used glass beads to do an initial cleaning. And then I took them over to the wire wheel on my pedestal grinder and uh, finished cleaning them up. The cork or fiber plate you can see there. I have, I have maintained the relative order of how they came out of the... Uh, clutch basket originally that's not absolutely necessary by the way if you do get them mixed up don't worry about it it's not a not a big a deal and I did um, inspect each one as we talked about before measured them all and they're well within spec in fact they're about right at factory specs uh, another point by the way on the steels the steel plates I did check them for flatness there's a specification on that also and these are well within the flatness spec from Honda. All the rest of the parts have just been basically cleaned up as you can see there with a uh, wire brush. I did not bead blast this. I did bead blast these two items and then took them to the wire wheel. I didn't do anything with the clutch uh, lift springs. Those are as they came out of the machine. The uh, fasteners I just hit them with a, oh, I just hit them with the uh, wire wheel real quick and clean them up. Those are the originals with washers and some of the attaching hardware and then of course the lifter plate. I cleaned that up a little bit as well. I did not bead blast this of course because of this bearing. These parts are still available from Honda by the way uh, including the bearing. This is just a pressed together assembly. It could be pressed apart and uh, I don't see the need. That bearing is nice and smooth in there. It's a common bearing. I think that's a 6001 bearing, if I recall correctly. But there's nothing wrong with it. And it's nice and clean and smooth, so I didn't even bother taking it apart. So you can contrast these uh, components with the original basket that we've looked at before. See the shape that's in. So again, some of these parts could have been salvaged. Uh, the main piece with the ring gear in it. 
probably not, but some of the rest of this could have been salvaged. The original clutch springs, and of course the lifter plate. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can see it there. And that bearing is locked up. So uh, the base plate could have probably been salvaged. Maybe the center, the spindle right here, might have been able to be salvaged. Certainly not the bearing. But I, again, I'm not going to bother with that. So what I'm going to do next is I'll bring the engine in here and uh, we'll go ahead and put the clutch together, re remount it on the bike. I'll show some, um, some of that process. I'm not sure I've really shown uh, assembly of clutch baskets before. I don't recall doing that for the Yamaha Wild One project. So I will show some of this as we go forward. I might fast forward through a little bit of it. We'll see as we get into it.